So um, welcome to this love meditation for Christmas. I'm so touched by listening to uh, each of you talk about how this time of year affects you and touches you. And it seems to me that Christmas brings into very sort of strong, stark um, contrast the state of our lives. You know, so when things are going well, it can all be, you know, wonderful family stuff or, you know, all of those things. But but also it brings into contrast any of the difficulty or the people who've died or the broken relationships or the past happy Christmases. Um, all of those sorts of things get brought into contrast, particularly for, you know, for people who are, you know, who've been brought up in a Christian culture. And of course, not everyone on this call has been brought up in a Christian culture. But even in any of the developed countries, Christmas has, you know, there's that whole consumer aspect of Christmas. And um, also, families, in many developed countries, families get together at Christmas as well, whether or not they're Christian. And that, of course, brings into to contrast whether things are the way you always thought they would be, you, you know, whether your life has turned out the way you hoped your life would turn out. Um, and all the difficulties of of life and one of the things about the difficulties of life is that with enough with enough resources with some degree of resource um of archetypal energy um those those difficult times in life um can be um be can become teachers now on their own the difficulty can just hurt us but if we have enough support, if we have enough inner resource, if we have enough resilience, then we can learn about the nature of life through, you know, through how we face our own woundedness. Um, I was reading something earlier on about, you know, we think that we want to be heroic in life, but actually the true heroism is to realize that life humbles us. Nothing, life never turns out the way that we wanted it as a child because of course people do die circumstances do change everything is ephemeral you know that's the bad news is that everything is ephemeral um and the good news is that the bad stuff is ephemeral too um but to really face that this condition the human condition of of having a sense of identity based on our past and having thoughts about the future so many animals and creatures live it purely in the present moment but we probably live in the past and the future more than we do live in the present moment and and so the practice is to come back to the present moment and notice to notice the beauty of this moment of of being alive um of consciousness of awareness and uh and that can be difficult, particularly when we have such strong, difficult feelings are evoked in our lives, which they are for some of us here. So touching to, to hear different stories from different people. Um, I think, you know, particularly the many of us here um, are, not everyone, but many of us are over 50. And when you get to a certain point in life, when your parents have died so all of those memories of your parents and childhood with childhood's memories of christmas with your parents you know that that's no longer here or relationships have ended um or children have grown up and left home um a lot of the beauty of family at christmas you know that may be something that's in feels in the past for you um or there may be woundedness. You know, one of the quotes that I put in my weekly newsletter was about, you know, Santa Claus had the right idea, only visit people once a year at Christmas. You know, sometimes you there are people in your life who you you only you only want to see once a year because you have to. Um, and um, so there's so much that gets touched and evoked. And yet for me, um, as you know, I'm... I would call myself a post-Buddhist um, in the no, non-dual space, 
all the, the mystical traditions of all the world's traditions meet. Um, and so, you know, um, Thomas Merton would start, you know, the Catholic mystic um, would study with um, a Zen master. Um, and so there's at that level, at the mystical level, the mystics could all are seeing the same thing and talking about the same thing. So that's what I mean by post-Buddhist. And one of the things uh, for me in the last couple of years is that uh, my partner is a, I would call her a post-evangelical Christian. You know, she's given um, the sort of charismatic sense that what Jesus had, we could all have, but without the fundamentalism, basically, without the, you know, without the, with the love and not the fundamentalism. So I have some sense of that as well, but I'm not someone for whom the Christmas story is the sort of main motif for me. So I want to talk talk more broadly um, and evoke a meditation that's broader. I do think that the fact that, that in the you know in the in the Western world you could call it, um, or in the Western world or the world that that celebrates Christmas, let's put it that way, um, that relationships and family and connection come to the fore, either the presence of it or the absence of it. And, you know, I remember uh, in my youth when I didn't spend time with my family, I remember spending Christmas on my own eating pizza, watching television, uh, you know, sort of painful memories. Um, so each of us have our own story around Christmas. And the purpose of this call is to evoke um, inner resources that can really support us through this process. Um, so I'd like to start with, before we evoke the resources, I want us to, to start with a meditation process. And I want to use one that many of you know that I like to do, which is just an awareness practice to start with. So um, we have, you know, you can notice four things that you hear. Uh, you can notice things that you feel. You can notice things that you see, bringing yourself into the present moment. So what are four things that you hear? I listen outside the window. This is a ritual I have. I listen outside the window. Can I hear anything outside? And even if I can't, I'm, I'm listening to sounds from a distance. And then I listen inside the house. Can I hear anything in the house? And then I listen in the room. And of course, you probably will have the sound of my voice from your computer. And then I listen in my body. Can I hear my breathing? Can you hear your heart? I hear my heart through the sound in my ears. There's a sort of pulsing sound in my ears. And as you listen to all of these levels, that's a space of awareness, the sound from the outside of the house, whether you can hear anything or not, right into the sounds in your body. It's like a, a space of awareness. 
And also you can listen to any inner voice you have, but listen from a distance. What is she saying? He's saying. Listening with curiosity and compassion from a distance to any voice in your head. And then noticing four things that you feel. And some of you will know that I like to pay attention to a place on the skin. Where is somewhere on your skin that you can feel right now? You might choose two places, the air temperature and a place where your clothing touches your skin. Or you might pay attention to the pressure of your skin, of your the skin on your backside on the chair or your feet on the floor. And then noticing muscles, picking a big muscle or a small muscle. If you pick a muscle that's on the underside of your body or close to your skin, you might see if you can feel the difference between the muscle and your skin. And then you can pay attention to any emotional feelings you have in the trunk of your body, in your viscera, your throat, your chest, your solar plexus, your belly, your sex. All of these sensations, so much to pay attention to. There's something very grounded about sensing the body. Just keep paying attention to more. Through the way gravity pulls you down into your chair. You can sense the earth beneath you. I imagine how my chair connects me to the earth, even though it's down through several floors. I imagine how my feet is rooted into the earth. Something solid and real about my body, which is made of earth and water. And air. That is more solid and real than the thoughts that swirl around in my head. Something... reassuring by just experiencing what is. And those thoughts that you're having right now, watching them from a distance with curiosity and interest, not believing them or disbelieving them. A 
and in your in your mind what are four things that you can see if your eyes are closed you might see the darkness of your eyelids but also specks of light on your eyelids and you might see images in your mind's eye And notice three things that you can hear right now. And three different feelings. And three things that you can see, for example, in your mind's eye, your eyelids, but also any images, or perhaps a particular little bit of light that's on your eyelids, even though your eyelids are dark. And then listening again for two things that you hear. And two things that you feel. Notice two different things in your body. And two things that you can see in your mind's eye. And one thing that you can hear right now. And one thing that you can feel. And one thing that you can see. And sitting here right now what's a quality or a resource that you'd like to have in your life earlier people mentioned patience empowerment love healing emotional resilience fierceness what's a quality that you want more of in your life right now
It's not something to write down, but more just to have a sense of. And who do you know who embodies that? We can just start with people to start with. Who do you know in your life at this time who embodies that quality? Or perhaps there's someone from the past. Perhaps there's someone you know really well. Or perhaps there's someone that you only met once. Or a teacher. Or even someone you met on the metro or the underground for a brief moment. An angel who visited you. Or maybe what comes to mind is someone from a movie or a storybook. Galadriel or Gandalf. Or Ged from the Wizard of Earthsea. or someone completely different. Or a famous person that you've never met. The resilience of Nelson Mandela being sent to prison for 27 years. I always have had deep admiration for Jesus the night before he was crucified, when he was sweating blood, he was so frightened. Yet he faced the suffering that was coming his way. So human. In a story of someone who knew their own divinity. Perhaps the archetype of what you need is something different. The female Buddha, Tara, who's like a mother, who the moment you cry is there for you instantly. Or Jesus as Christ. My love will be with you. I will be with you till the end of time. Or the Sufi images of God as a love affair with God. An erotic love affair with God. Sometimes I like to imagine how out of nothingness the universe was created as love, as relationship. But life is love is relationship, that what glues the universe together is love. 
and that I've never been separate for that, even for an instant, even when I've forgotten. But it's easier when I remember. It's easier when I remember that I've never been separate from love. But it isn't always where I look for it. My mother wasn't there as a child. Partners have left me. Yet the other day in the London Underground, just a couple of days ago, a three-year-old girl who I was sitting next to put her head on my chest and gave me a hug. with the watchful eye of her parents. Or the cat that says hello in the street. Or the doctor that was so welcoming. in an over-busy British public health service schedule. I noticed the love of my breath, of air coming into my body, keeps me alive, of mother nature, of the food that I eat and the water that I drink that holds me in life. And of all the qualities and resources in the universe, I wonder which one would be most useful for you right now. It could be the memory of a child looking into your eyes, a baby. Or it could be a, a light emanating from a distant galaxy that represents higher power source. Or it could be a figure like the goddess or Jesus, or Mary Magdalene, or Lao Tzu, or Buddha, or Padmasambhava. or Shiva. or Haviz, or Rumi, or all your own personal saint that fills you with light.
Perhaps it's just a feeling that comes from them. Or perhaps it's a rainbow light entering your body through your chakras. Or just into your heart. We can mix up the traditions. We can imagine the light of a Buddha that enters our heart, but have it come from Jesus or a laughing Sufi saint or Mother Earth. Or we can hear the sound of silence. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. How does it sound to you? And some of you will most enjoy receiving these blessings as light into your body. And some will most enjoy receiving these blessings as a feeling. Perhaps the light is like a rain that fills your body or honey dripping into your heart and your belly. Or the sound of amazing grace. Let me remind you what grace is. Grace is the love that was there before you were born and after you die. That's never been separate from you. Leaning into it, reaching out to it, praying to it, calling it, helps us embody it, helps us feel it. When we're stuck in our isolated selves, separate, it's hard to receive the healing that's already here, the love that's already here. When we reach out, when we lean into it, when we cry out with our longing, we receive it more easily. Even though we're alive because of love, somehow, the healing is much easier when we intentionally create a rendezvous with love, with presence. Some people feel it as a vast space, space of awareness or phenomenon. Some people feel it as an infinite well in their heart.
Some people feel it as a luminous floating presence. Lean into it. Let yourself become saturated with it. Let it drip down into the sore places in your body. Echo into you. One way to receive this that I haven't mentioned so far. Sometimes I imagine or I feel like a column of light entering through the crown of my head into my body. I could feel it through the crown of my head entering my body and also how it goes out through the base of my spine, through the center of the earth. There are infinite ways. The Buddhists say 84,000, but infinite is better. Infinite ways of experiencing the great ocean of existence, of source. When we feel alone and isolated, we're like a little wave, a little foaming wave that rises and then will disappear on the ocean of existence. But when we lean into the ocean of existence, we can experience ourselves as the, as the ocean itself. Little waves come and go, but the ocean remains. We are the ocean of existence. So what if healing was your birthright? What if he, if Healing was given for free. What if we could receive healing without deserving it, without any need to deserve it? Just because love is unconditional. Could we let ourselves receive unconditional Feeling, love. What if everything is waiting for you? Do you need to lean into the good and the precious? Lean into the light. Lean into the transformational energy. Lean into the Tao, the Holy Spirit.
the way that the sacred moves in us from moment to moment, not according to our plans or our expectations about how life would be, but on its own course. Do we fight the present moment or do we coast surf the present moment? So many of us think of, and it can be useful to think of life as a journey, of growth and development, like a tree that is quiet in the winter and draws up water quietly and then buds in the spring and flourishes in summer. And then let's go of the unnecessary in autumn and is quiet again in the winter. Life is a journey. But also the destination is when of, whenever we get off the train. Whenever we get off the train, that's the destination. If we get off the train right now, this is the destination. An ancient British mystic. wrote a book or a letter actually called the cloud of unknowing you let go of everything all your thoughts all your stories all your theology all your expectations come to the present moment this moment And having rested in this moment, send a dart of love from your own heart, from your finite heart, your human heart, a dart of love to the infinite. You send your, the, your little love out to the infinite love to source to the space of phenomena and that infinite love that infinite space of phenomena is so happy with your dart of love a little dart of love from a human heart evokes the infinite space of phenomena Christian mystic said that God is happy with just a little effort, just a little from us. We just lean in a little. We don't have to be perfect. We just lean in a little into the infinite, the eternal.
I think of Jesus as a Buddha. And it's a beautiful story of unimaginable suffering, facing unimaginable suffering, of being human. And that taking Jesus through to unity with the one. And the invitation that this can be true for each of us. Not to avoid our suffering, but to go through it and connect with the infinite. Every day, I aim to have a rendezvous with the infinite, a date with the infinite, a hot date with the infinite in my practice. You need to get to know If God, if Buddha nature, if the goddess, if the space of phenomena, if the source is your, your partner and you need to keep having dates with your partner. And some would say, I would say, that once a day is important, a sacred time every day, a sacred rendezvous every day. But once an hour for two minutes, on top of that is even better. Imagine if throughout the day, we stopped for a moment to lean into source. And that, that we let ourselves receive. To let myself receive love, healing, resilience, into those painful places in my emotional body. For me to keep reaching out with my heart to the infinite and to turn on. And to receive back, to let myself receive back, to let it in. The love, the healing, so powerful but can we just let it in have the humility to let it in the self-forgiveness to let it in in this eternal moment between past and future, this present moment.
Can you notice how this is more powerful than the story of your past or the fabrication of your future? Finally, one of the things that infinite space, source, eternity presence Buddha nature loves. is when we intentionally remember that we're interconnected with everything, that we're part of everything, interdependent with everything. We can't necessarily maintain the sense that we're all one, all the time. But we can remind ourselves. And we can do that by reaching out to other people. Particularly during this period. There are the obvious people you can call. to share your heart with and to hear their heart. There are people that you haven't thought about calling, but perhaps might in a day or two. There are people that you might invite for tea or coffee or a meal. There might be people in your street who you give a, a drop of kindness to. Perhaps some drop from this meditation will be in your heart and you will just give a drop of it to the beggar on the street or the woman working in the supermarket. Not only can we lean into presence, the infinite with a little dart of love, but we can also be very watchful for moments of the sacred spontaneously arising in the world around us. Moments when they, the thickness of the material world gets thin and then there's an opportunity to see someone's heart or to use words to drop just a little kindness in someone's heart. or look them in the eye. In the way that a baby looks 
you in the eye or with sweetness. So that during this holiday period, we can look for how do we bring this quality to those around us? How do we share our vulnerability with others? to be brave enough to share our vulnerability by having intimate, connected conversation from our soul. How can we stop or notice moments when a moment of the sacred is unfolding, where there's a moment where we can Say, I see you, or see the person without saying, I see you, where a glance or a look or a gesture or a little joke or a kind word a moment of kindness. One way out of our little isolated world is to reach out and touch other people's worlds. Who can we touch with love? If we remember, if we have a rendezvous with source daily, and we just remember source daily, and our by our, perhaps we can bring a little moment of connection with source to people around us. So there's the, the, the vow of the Bodhisattva in Buddhism. I will not enter heaven until all other beings have entered before me. Or I can bring a little drop of heaven. Bring is really the wrong word. It's be a channel for, be a conduit for. Mm. So when you're ready, I'd like you to... Gently reorientate to the screen. Just notice everybody who's here. So I want to spend a little time in groups of five. And one thing only I want you to share. What is a moment or a feeling or a sense of the sacred that you had during this meditation? What's the feeling of the sacred or the eternal or healing or love. 
that you had during the course of the meditation. So the group of four, can you do your own timing, five minutes each? And the group of five, I will do the timing for the group of five, four minutes each. Groups start now. Um, how was it for you? How you know? What did you get from the meditation? Have you you know how? What was? What did you learn? Have you got any questions? Are you asking me, or are you asking everyone? I'm asking everyone actually. Okay. Good. But you as well. Right. Okay, it was a reminder to um, have faith in myself. I joined this to have a little moment for myself, as someone said earlier, a gift for myself. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, was a little space in time, you know, it, there's always busyness um, in, in this month. And so to make sure that I had this available space where it would be peaceful, I was sure. And uh, that's necessary, you know, we come back to, into ourselves so then we can give of ourselves again, refresh and um, yeah, just be sweet again and to yeah. remember, to remember. So yes. thank you very much. Cool. Beautiful, thank you, Roma. Um, hello. Um, yes, I found that very powerful. It was, uh, um, well, you, 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 you got so much in there. It was, um, what, one of the, the incredible things for me was the, the resources, all the, you know, from Buddha to Jesus to dead people to friends to, you know, everything. Um, they were all in the room, mm, and I haven't, you know, I've had one or two before, mm. but I haven't had all of them. <laughs> you know, mm. it was, it was. No, uh, oh, what a blessing! It was an incredible blessing, and I also, and I said this with the group that I realised that the, I had a, a friend died last week, and I have a, a friend who's dying now. You know, it's a matter of days, and and. See, and so I'm sort of watching him in, uh, and I realized well, that I would you know, definitely like to die with all those resources. Yeah, yeah. so that's the way we, we would all want to die. That's Absolutely, right. you know. And then I realized I'd like to live like that as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's great. You know? um, and, uh, and I loved uh, also the, um, the idea of calling out. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. It reminded me of calling the Lama from afar, you know, yeah. Lama Kieno. Yeah. And I just thought it was it was one of your best, Julian. It was fantastic. It was, Thank yeah, you. It was, and I look so, forward to hearing it again. Great, good, good. Who else? Um, just, oh, well, just before anybody else comes, just to say, she mentioned calling the Lama from afar. There's a beautiful Buddhist prayer, which is like, so, so a lot of the in the Tibetan Buddhism, the transmission, a lot of the transmission of presence comes through the teacher. But then, you, so you know, then when you call the Lama from afar, but then you realize that the Lama is nothing else other than your own continuous mind. So that within the same thing, you're not calling out to the Lama from afar, but it's the continuous presence source which you've never been separate from. Um, who else? I'd love to hear from everybody, actually. Um, 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 Li hello, can hello. we hear? <laughs> so yeah. Li Hui says she she felt uh, love and uh, the love and compassion. Yeah, like when you said we can give a drop of our love to other people. Yeah. Felt it and she, she wants to do it. 
yeah. it's such a fun thing to do you know going around sprinkling stardust I love doing it you know and it makes me feel better you know it not, makes the other person feel better and it makes yeah. me feel better when I sprinkle a little stardust you know thank you thank you thank you thank you great who else who's next actually not who else but who's next mm. i'll go if you want can you hear me go on go on um well thank you very much julian it's it's been a long time since i've done this and um uh, th sort of this was my gift to myself today which i was saying to some you know the others in my group i had done a, a session of reset reflexology for me and then i had this for me so mm. this is a wee day of sort of self-care for me mm. so um i really enjoyed it and um i got out of it um people in my past you know that i had thought about during the reflexology as well i thought about them during the meditation you know a favorite aunt favorite uncle mm. um who were very important to me so so that was lovely thank you very much Good, beautiful. Thank you, Patricia. Let's hear from everyone. And we've got six minutes, so yeah. Yeah, I can share what I get from the yeah. Great, Emily. Yeah, <laughs> like when you uh, when you talk about the waves and the ocean, I think I think it's a very good way to to associate your emotions. Like waves come and go, but mm -hmm. your but the love is uh, is always there. The existence is like the ocean. It's always there. Mm. So I think we can just let let our emotions, especially the bad emotions, mm. go. Mm. <laughs> and uh, and the love is always there. Mm. We can seek for the love. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a very very good good association. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, we haven't heard from Barbara. We haven't heard from Zaka. We haven't heard from. Well, uh, Mary, you're muted, I think. Your lips are moving, but you're muted. Okay, sorry, I'm not very good at this. No, don't um, worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, as I shared with the others, I, I did. Um, it reminded me how important it is for me to meditate, and I haven't done it for quite a long time. Uh, I feel much calmer mm. after it, and um, just being still for that time is really good for me. Mm. Um, and I got a very strong sense of love, especially from my parents. I felt like my parents were here with me. Beautiful. So thank you for that. That's so beautiful, Mary. Yeah. They'll always be with us. One of the secrets is with people who've gone to keep them in the room with us. You know, it's like have them as close, have, have them close. Um, and generally with all of, you know, I always have Jesus in the room and the Buddha in the room and Mary Magdalene in the room and Yeshi Sogyal in the room. Have them in the room. Don't have, you know, sometimes it's great to have a figure in the sky off at a distance sending us love, but sometimes we need them in the room, you know. So, yeah. Talk to your parents every day, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Barbara. I don't know why I keep thinking about it. Uh... 
I was, we were digging through some stuff to uh, in, a, in a storage room, and I found a suitcase full of things that had a coat I got on Portobello Road because that was very special. And it was very cold day, and I found a blanket saying "All you need is love," and I didn't know where they were until today, and that was a gift. It was just like, okay, spirits coming through. We're going to have gifts this year. Yeah. So the and I'd like to sprinkle uh, love dust on everybody. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> okay. I receive it. So when somebody says something like that, exactly, just receive it. Yeah. Feel it. Sarko. Well, I had all this time, uh, every single day, this uh, feeling of the darkness getting, I kind of sense an awareness of every single day, feeling that one minute less and less or two minutes less of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of start to identify it, uh, with the people who kind of try to bring uh, back sunshine this urge to identify with them and go with them to make the sun come back uh, very soon. So um, that. Yeah, have the that, sun in your, uh, shine the sun in your heart. <laughs> shine the sun in and, your heart. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it then came with the kind of uh, 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 phrase because I was saying, what would I say today when you ask us, tell it in one sentence and one minute, and that I always have trouble. And uh, I wrote down, which is kind of not quite clear, the, the music of silent light. Mm, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what does it mean, Thank you. but that was kind of, I think that, that expresses my feeling now. Okay, Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Paul writes, it was a helpful exercise. When I think of my late, because your microphone's not working, is it? Is that right, Paul? So um, that's rather sad. So I'm just going to read your message. It was a helpful exercise. When I think of my late parents, I feel hurt for them in my sadness. I think of the serenity prayer, the things you cannot change, but really need changing and putting right. CF Matilda musical. I haven't seen the musical, so uh, I don't know about that. But anyway. Hopefully you'll get your uh, microphone fixed sometime soon, or maybe it just need you need a reboot or something. Roma, have you spoken about what you got from the meditation? You did. Great. Fantastic. I remember the chat at the beginning. We were chatting about you being inside your cold house in Scotland or your warm house in a cold environment. So it's really been great to be with you here today. I just want to remind some of you that I'm running the, you know, um, the 2023 Life Talent Program from Thursday, the 20, I think it's the 24th of January. Part one is nine weeks and part two is 28 weeks. It goes for the whole year, but you can do part one without part two. And uh, I'll be talking more about that in January. It's a way of doing a really deep personal journey, development journey throughout um, 2023, if that's what you would like, a boost to your resources. So it's great, so great to have you here today. The um, first Wednesday in January, I think it's the 4th or something, I'm doing a session on what's your vision for 2023. So, um, yeah, yeah, positive vision, Roma. Really have a positive, you know, we, you know, we all need hope. We all need vision. Uh, so how can we just have a little bit more of what we truly want uh, in 2024? So that's what we're going to be doing then. And uh, have a great, have a great holiday. Lots and lots of love with you. Um, yeah, yeah. I think of you and I pray and I wish the best for you. And uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Have, a lovely, have a lovely holiday. Thank you. Thank you all. Happy. Merry. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.